Ilma Af Klint was a Swedish artist. She painted at the end of the 1800s and during the first half of the 20th century. She's considered an innovator and one of the first, if not the first, artist to do abstract paintings. In the first decades of the 21st century, her work came to the fore and she was quickly recognized as an innovator in abstract art. Her abstract paintings predate by several years the works of Wassily Kandinsky, Kazimir Malevich, and Piet Mondrian, the artists who until the discovery of Af Klint's work in the 21st century were considered the founders of abstract painting. Af Klint was born in Solna, Sweden. She was the fourth child of Matilda Af Klint and Captain Victor Af Klint, a Swedish naval commander. She spent many summers on the island of Aldeso around the Lake Malloran area. In these surroundings she came into contact with nature at an early age and developed a deep affinity with natural forms which were to inspire her work later when she became an artist. As Alf Klint got older her family moved to Stockholm, Sweden and she attended a technical school there. At the age of 20 between 1882 and 1887, she studied art at the esteemed Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Stockholm. And she was among the earliest women to study there. The work she did at that time was fairly typical of a young beginning artist, yet showed great promise. When she got out of school, she gained recognition for her landscapes, botanical drawings, and portraits. And though her conventional painting became a source of income, her life's work was to become quite separate. It was around 1879, after her sister died, that she became interested in spiritualism. Of course, spiritualism was not a part of mainstream culture in Europe, but it drew the interest of many writers, artists, and philosophers in the early 20th century. Like many other people of her time, and as young people just beginning to explore life often do, Off Clint began to explore different approaches to understanding life. One avenue she explored was seancing. From her engagement with seancing, she was inspired to create a message for humankind with her painting. From that inspiration, geometric and idiosyncratic paintings emerged. And her life's work of painting abstract and spiritual paintings began. Between 1896 and 1905, Hoff Klimp experimented with automatic drawing. This was a kind of stream of consciousness approach to drawing where you just let your hand and your mind do what they wanted without planning or overt consciousness. Of Clint's automatic drawing was more than 10 years before André Messon and André Breton explored automatism, their version of automatic writing which led to surrealism.
soon Hoff Klint met Helena Blavatsky, an important free thinker and spiritualist of the day and spokesperson for theosophy. Hoff Klint was impressed with Blavatsky's philosophies, which stated, in essence, that within each individual human there is an eternal facet, which Blavatsky referred to as the master, the uncreate, and the higher self. She promoted the idea that uniting with this inner self results in wisdom. She promoted the saying, there is no religion higher than truth. She said, matter is spirit at its lowest level. Spirit is matter at its highest level. From her involvement with Madame Blavatsky in 1906, Off Clint created a series of paintings called The Ten Largest. The ten paintings in the series were predominantly abstract and represented four stages of human development childhood, youth, adulthood, and old age. Each composition took only four days to paint. Because of their size, the works were most likely created on the studio floor, a radical departure from the easel painting conventions of off Clint's day. At the time of their making, Off Clint didn't exhibit the paintings from the Ten Largest series. In addition, she stipulated that the works not be shown until 20 years after her death. In 1908, Off Clint met Rudolf Steiner, the founder of another approach to Spiritism. Steiner called the Anthroposophical Society. Steiner introduced Off Clint to his theories regarding the arts, and this would have some influence on her painting later in life. Steiner said, Our highest endeavor must be to develop free human beings who are able of themselves to impart purposes and direction to their lives. The need for imagination, a sense of truth, and a feeling of responsibility. These three forces are the very nerve of education. Four years later, in 1920, Off Clint met Steiner again at the Gothianum in Dornick, Switzerland. This was the headquarters of Steiner's Anthroposophical Society. Between 1921 and 1930, Off Clint spent much time there. Off Clint's paintings had a diagrammatic purpose, yet quite apart from that, the paintings had a freshness and a modern aesthetic that was ahead of its time. Off Clint's over is impregnated with symbols, letters, and words. The paintings very often depict symmetrical dualities, such as up and down, in and out, earthly and esoteric, male and female, and good and evil. Of Clint's color choice generally is metaphorical. Blue stands for the female, yellow for the male, pink and red for physical and spiritual love.
Despite the popular belief that Af Klint had chosen to never exhibit her works, there is some evidence that she exhibited in London in 1928 at the World Conference on Spiritual Science. Of Clint's visual language had an ordered progression. It included grids, spirals, geometric forms like squares and circles. Some of her works were unusual, which showed a courage to play with eccentricity. Certainly her use of spirals was a reflection of her interest in the natural world. And though perhaps done with different purposes in mind, her involvement with geometry predates the geometric abstraction movement of the 1970s. Some of her paintings in the 20s show that she also predated the color field pouring work done in the 1970s and 80s. In the 1930s, Hoff Klint's work became more expressionistic, perhaps similar to the neo-expressionist movement in the 1970s and 80s. There's no doubt that Hilma Off Klint was a pioneer. Her talent and her innovations place her as one of the most important artists of the 20th century.